Welcome to TradeTheNBA.com. This is Chandler's report for the 25th, and there it is. You can see we're still pushing out past new highs. Slide that over a little bit for you here. Um, as we break through, we had the nice little dip of the orange below the red, and we continued to rise. Um, we've had a little trail off of short-term buyers, uh, but now we're at a critical point where we've got to see not just uh, midterm buyers here, but also uh, turn back up of the red. We need to get up into the red zone because we start rolling over here uh, or even see a steel cross below cyan. We would expect to see uh, more of a pullback. Um, and oftentimes you'll get that little breakout move above here and then people will sell into the breakout of that and we'll come back in and fill a little bit. But um, still, riding beautifully. Everything from above that uh, green ABM when we dip back below it was a turnaround point from here and been nice. Easy read, same thing NASDAQ. Uh, now it's interesting because you look at the NASDAQ making the new highs. Uh, relative to the S&P, it's right in line. However, look at how low that shakeout is. So we're either going to continue to break out, but if we start to see a uh, decline in the shakeout, and you can see the NASDAQ here putting in a positive extreme for the first time. Could indicate we're getting a little bit of froth and the Euro no stop to its move. Uh, pretty extreme in this, um, bump here but um, complete reset of the short-term buyers and that means that this can go a lot further um, right now hovering there we've got some positive extremes that uh, eventually will get a little backfill but uh, with the amount of uh, interest in this uh, we saw this large accumulation and once they got it moving in the direction uh, forcing dramatic uh, short cover in that because pretty much uh, euros unstabilized even despite the new rumblings of that Greek uh, situation uh, hasn't posed any major threat. I think everyone believes that uh, it'll work out regardless. Um, here's the move back to bonds and that's just because we cannot seem to get a clear indication of whether or not growth is actually taking place. It looks like it's uh, fits and starts at this particular point but the general bias is, is that uh, things are still soft enough that they don't expect uh, aggressive Fed action, which um, seems counter to what the Fed has said. So we'll see if they're going to maintain, I mean, the increases they've already uh, put in have been difficult for uh, the economy to absorb at this particular point, but it has put a stranglehold on trying to achieve, uh, gosh, we're still looking in the one to 2% growth range, uh, not anywhere near what uh, Trump wants as far as plus 3% or more. So that's going to require some kind of changes. And you just had the Senate come out saying that they didn't see that they could get to 50 votes for Obamacare repeal, which that is going to put a huge damper on, um, well, tax cuts for the future, as well as a lot of other things. So that's only going to cripple uh, Trump's agenda and moving things forward. Uh, oil, just going to stall out here for a while. There's a limitation to how much you can push this, even with the idea that summer demand is going to include things. Um, there's still just huge inventories and the ability to ramp up supply, I think, is just going to be an ongoing problem. Uh, I think that uh, even Trump mentioned selling part of the petroleum reserve. Uh, that certainly is a nice threat, and if it's implemented, could uh, maintain uh, uh, keeping prices soft, depending on how much. It's, it sounds simple to do, but it's not an easy thing to move what they have from the storage facilities they do. So I think it's, a, like usual, a bit of hyperbole. You're going to have to get used to that uh, concept where you talk about things to try and move it as opposed to them actually happening. Um, people haven't quite adjusted to his style yet. Uh, gold, it's still going to be uh, a winner overall. I don't see any problems with that. The ES, we had a long day. Let me shrink this. It's just slow built. And that's what all these fives represent. They represent the same orange uh, dips below or um, crossovers, uh, but they tend not to be from a complete reset is the problem. And um, in this particular case though, they stayed right with the ABM and uh, accumulated continually over the day. And then boom, here we go. Aftermarket is when they let it fly up, forces additional short covering, and they can take uh, Modest gains. This is still the relatively low range, obviously, of Fed uh, minutes and things coming out that's 
going to have some degree of impact, but we talked about this. The idea was that they were going to move it to 2400 and get over, and it's usually that burst. The question is, uh, you probably need to get into the 24, uh, 25 ranges or so in order to guarantee that you're going to hold it, because you may see some backfill into it. But either way, um, the signal right here, when we came up above the plus 13.5, it'll tiny little move above, but it's already started the little retrace. But key with that is when you get this kind of reset with the steel means that you're just going to push back up to it. So even if we get a retrace, I'm still looking for these highs to be touched again during the regular market hours without any question. So that is the long and short of it, mostly long in this particular case. As always, though, trade well. We will, uh, I'll post continued charts on Skype. Yesterday was just so boring. There was just nothing happening. But I think we'll probably see a little bit more activity here as we head to the end of the week. As always, trade well.